Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on precession electron diffraction, PED. My name is Rena Samsu, marketing at EAG Laboratories, a Eurofins company. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items for today's event. All attendees have been muted. However, we'd still love to hear from you during today's presentation. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions panel located in the bottom right of your screen. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. Dr. Shang Yu Sha, manager of TM Imaging, will be answering some of the questions during the presentation and will also collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. At the end of the webinar, a survey will pop up on your screen. Your feedback is greatly appreciated and will help us to improve our future events. I would now like to introduce our presenter, Dr. Jeff Wang, Senior Material Scientist at Nanolab Technologies EAG Laboratories. Oh, thank you, Rina, uh, for the introduction. And uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for taking time to join this webinar. Um, today, we are going to talk about the uh, TM-based uh, PED technique. So before we start our talk, uh, here is a little bit about myself. I'm Jeff Wang, my Chinese name Wang Shaojie, and I'm from physics and material science background. After I got my PhD from Lehigh University, I joined the uh, industrial lab, mostly serving the um, uh, semiconductor and consumer electronics industry. And my focus is mainly in uh, materials uh, microanalysis, uh, use different uh, TM-based technique, uh, including the PED uh, that we are going to discuss about today. So here's the online we are going to discuss today. Uh, first part is a little bit, uh, a bit of the uh, uh, sales pitch, uh, who we are as European Material Science Division and Neo Lab Technology, and what um, about what we are good at. And basically, we are third-party service lab. We help our customer uh, solve their technical problem, and then we are going to talk about what kind of tool we have to do so. And uh, in this part, we map the um, all the available techniques uh, in a chart uh, called small chart. And with this chart, uh, we can better uh, understand the strengths and the limitation of the different technique. In this part, we are also going to discuss the concept of elemental characterization and structurally, uh, structural characterization concept in the microanalysis. And what we will see uh, where this uh, TM-based um, PED technique fits in this chart. And because uh, PED is a TM based technique, uh, in, this, uh, in the next part, we will briefly uh, discuss the basics and the typical application of the TM. And after this, we will then discuss about PED. We will discuss what is PED, how it works, and why we need it, and so on. The last part is the, uh, application, uh, uh, the application case study, and then we will uh, see how we can use PED to, um, to study the uh, most advanced uh, device, like uh, 7 nanometer EUV technology, SOC chip, and the uh, 3D lamp structure. And let's see how the PED uh, can help us understand the material and solve the problem. Okay, so first part, who we are. We are European Scientific, uh, European Scientific Material Science Division is a big family, and we have a lab over 20 locations in several countries. And we offer uh, seven, uh, 40 plus analytical technique with uh, 300 um, instruments. And we have about uh, 800 scientists, engineer and uh, supporting career scientists. And for PD analysis that uh, we are discussing about today, we offer it uh, in a lab at our Mia Peters, California location called NanoLab Technologies. NanoLab was found in 2007, and later NanoLab joined the uh, European Material Science Division uh, EAG family in uh, 2018. Uh, NanoLab has uh, 80 plus employees, and more than uh, half of them has advanced degree. And we serve uh, many industry and also customer uh, from academia. 
uh, we are ISO certified and we have quite a few uh, state of the art tools. And for example, uh, we have a 20 plus uh, Dubin uh, uh, FIB and SEM tool and um, 6 TEMs. And this allows us to process a large amount of sample with fast turnaround time. And you may ask how many and how fast. And here's the number. Uh, we process thousands um, of the um, thousands of the sample here I highlight here and we can deliver results in um, um, two day one day or even same day uh, depending on the um, customer's request and of course running uh, a lab uh, with such a large volume uh, logistics become very important so we have a very strong uh, supporting team called production control team uh, who make sure that the customer uh, is taken good care of and uh, everything in the lab is running uh, smoothly. Neo Lab offer many advanced characterization tools. Uh, some of them I highlight over here. Uh, for example, the TM, we have abrasion uh, corrected TM here, and uh, that can provide the sub entrance resolution. And it combined uh, with the EDS and EDS, it can provide uh, chemical analysis at the atomic level. We also have an atom probe that uh, can um, provide the uh, resolution at the um, at the uh, um, uh, at the, uh, at, at the atomic level, and as, at the same time can uh, uh, get the uh, chemical. Uh, sensitivity at the ppm level and this is the only uh, commercial available uh, atom probe uh, from the service lab that is uh, uh, that is openly uh, available for everybody to use um, so now uh, with so many tools um, or material characterization technique available some people might ask is there any way that uh, we can easily compare the strengths and uh, the limitation um, of this technique side by side so in this way, we can compare them and pick the, uh, the right technique to solve the problem. So the answer is yes, we have already uh, done so uh, for you. Uh, we map all the available technique we have in a chart uh, called Smart Chart. So Smart Chart stands for uh, Spectral Speed, a Microscopy Analytical Resolution Tool. And here it shows the technique we have available plot uh, to show their attribution related to the resolution and the detection limit. The x-axis um, is the range of the resolution from one centimeter uh, to the right down to one angstrom uh, to the left. The uh, y-axis uh, is the concentration. And within this box, we, uh, within this box, we can easily uh, select the technique uh, based on their detection limit uh, that we need and the size of the uh, the areas of the interest. All right, so uh, let's take uh, one step back. Is that uh, one thing uh, we can see from the chart is that most of these tools uh, here we use is for chemical or uh, elemental analysis. And these tools are uh, used to detect the uh, material with different elemental composition or chemical state. And some of them, uh, for example, seems can uh, be very sensitive in detecting a uh, very minimal amount of the uh, elemental difference uh, down to PPB, uh, uh, part of a billion, uh, or the PPT, part of a trillion le uh, level. But what about the material that, um, that has exactly the same chemical elemental distribution? Uh, are they necessarily the same? Um, to answer this question, let's uh, look at one example here. Here shows the grain size distribution of a few uh, stainless steel sample. And that is uh, has uh, exactly the same chemical composition, but uh, they have a different um, annealing time and they have a different uh, grain size. This plot here shows that how the uh, year strength change on the y axis with the grain size on the x, x axis. And we can see that the uh, steel with a small grain size is harder and stronger. And this is because the dislocation movement is uh, hindered by the uh, grain boundary. So the smaller the grain size, the more grain boundary and the higher of the, uh, of the year strength. And this phenomena we call is grain boundary strengthening. And also besides this, um, the 
the electron, the light, the acoustic wave also get sta uh, scattered as the grain boundary, which we can change, um, uh, which can change many uh, physical properties of the material, like uh, resistivity, transparency, and, and, and so on. So it is very important to characterize and understand the uh, material microstructure. So what what is the what the tool that we have to probe this uh, material uh, structure difference? To answer this question, let's again uh, look back to our smart chart here. We know that diffraction is a great tool to probe the atomic structure of the material. And for X-ray size, we have uh, um, uh, XRD. And from the electron beam side, we have a SEM based um, uh, EBSD. And these are great tools that can help us understand the structure and the material and solve a lot of problems. Um, however, uh, as we can see from here, the resolution limits of this technique. Uh, the X, XRD as an X ray technique, it has a resolution uh, about uh, hundreds of micron, while the uh, SEM based EBSD has a resolution of about 100 or 15 nanometer. Now, as the technology is um, aggressively um, size shrinking to a nanometer arrow, then we need to have a micro analysis tool that can categorize the structure information uh, as a nanometer uh, resolution. And that is exactly where the TM based um, PD technique uh, can fit in. As a TM based technique, you can offer uh, the structure information as a nanometer resolution. Because PED uh, is a TM based technique, before we go into the PED itself, uh, let's um, briefly go over the TM technique and go over its uh, basics and also the application. TM stands for Transmission Electron Microscopy. Uh, from its name, electron and transmission, we know that they use uh, electron as a light source to transmit and penetrate through the sample. And because the penetration depth of the electron into the material uh, is very small, and so we need to um, prepare a very thin um, specimen uh, using different techniques. And the final specimen is typically less than uh, 100 nanometer. And the last word, um, microscopy means magnifies the image. Depending on the way how we magnify this, we can classify our TM technique into two major imaging mode. The first one or more conventional one is TM mode. And how it works is just like a, a, a visible light microscope. It uses a parallel beam to project through the thin specimen and magnifies it by using different level of the electromagnetic lens and projected image on a film or capture uh, by a camera. The second mode is a uh, stem mode, of course, scanning transmission electron microscopy. And if uh, from its name, we know that it's uh, work like a SEM. It focuses the uh, um, electron beam and scan across the sample. The detector collects the signal and from the images. And because of these uh, different uh, mechanisms, the contrast and the application of these two modes are different. So for example, uh, we can get more diffraction and phase contrast from TM mode. And for STEM mode, we mostly get a Z contrast. And what can we do using this, um, using this TM tool? So first of all, because you offer extra high resolution, we can use it to do uh, high resolution uh, imaging for accurate uh, measurement. So with the aberration character, we can reach uh, um, uh, 0.7 angstrom resolution. And that is smaller than the typical uh, at atomic spacing. Here's an example uh, show that the uh, silicon dumbbell of uh, 0 0.1, uh, smaller than 0 0.13 um, nanometer and can be clearly resolved by uh, our aberration correct uh, TEM machine. So we can see it, uh, we can use it um, to do a uh, maturity and failure analysis at the atomic level. And TEM uh, not only can uh, allow us to see things clearly, um, 
Also, many uh, information can be uh, revealed uh, by the TEM. For example, in this case, uh, we can determine the displacement uh, vector of the stacking fault. This is a type of a defect in the standard sphere. Uh, in this case, we can use different diffraction spots to form um, um, dark field images. And we note when the G of the diffraction beam dot R, there is the uh, displacement vector of the uh, stacking fault uh, equals to an integer, um, stacking fault become disappears. In this case, uh, stacking force disappeared at um, um, two minus two zero diffraction beam. So we can determine the, uh, the direction of this uh, uh, stacking fault. Besides this, we can also use TEM to conduct experiments at a nanometer scale. We can heat the sample up, we can cool it down and observe it under TEM at atomic level real time. And we can also do the uh, mechanical testing or even inject current and test uh, each of the individual transistor and observe its uh, real-time response at the atomic level. And also, um, as we just discussed, uh, TEM uses electron beams um, to penetrate the thin sample and project it on a screen. The mechanism is just like a projector. So traditionally speaking, we consider TEM is a 2D uh, technique, but we can also uh, use special holder and uh, capture the images of this object at a different angle. And then we can use the software to reconstruct the images and recreate uh, the 3D uh, structure. So with, uh, with some limitation, uh, getting this uh, 3D information um, out of a sample in TEM is also possible. And this technique we call is a TM um, tomography technique. And TM is uh, more than uh, just an imaging tool. And as we know, uh, as the uh, electron beam uh, interact with the material, it can generate the, uh, the X-ray. And at the same time, the primary uh, electron beams uh, lost center uh, certain energy. And these X-rays, um, and the uh, primary uh, energy, uh, primary electron energy loss uh, is elemental uh, specific. So we can use this information to do uh, elemental analysis. So for example, the X-ray information uh, we can use for the EDS and um, the electron energy loss we can use for uh, ES analysis. And when we uh, couple this uh, chemical analysis um, technique with uh, our atomic resolution stem capability, and we can do the atomic scale uh, chemical analysis. And if you want to learn more about this, please join us on, uh, uh, same time next week. Uh, Xiang Yu uh, from our group is going to give a webinar uh, discussing about this uh, advanced uh, EDS years technique and how we can use this technique uh, to help us to solve the challenging uh, technical problems. And besides this uh, chemical analysis, um, TN can also provide the structural uh, information. Uh, for example, it can provide this uh, uh, grand orientation mapping, uh, just like uh, EBSD, but at a higher resolution. It can also provide the uh, strand mapping as a nanometer resolution. Uh, with 10 minus 4 strain uh, sensitivity. So the question uh, right now is how we can do that. So the answer is uh, a precession electron diffraction. And this brings us to the next part uh, of my talk, PED. Now, what is PED? Uh, from its name, uh, we know that it's, um, electron it's an electron diffraction technique. So first, uh, we need to understand uh, what is a diffraction in the TEM and how we got this uh, diffraction pattern in TEM. Diffraction uh, in TEM is a, a very, very complicated topic. Uh, I would possibly like spend 20 slices, uh, half hour to discuss about diffra uh, the diffraction uh, before I, uh, I reach this slide. Um, because of the, um, sorry, let's go back to this. Uh, because of the time limitation, I will just give you the conclusion in this slide, how we get the diffraction pattern uh, from a, a crystalline material in TEM. 
And this slice is very important uh, to understand the uh, working principle of a diffraction and also the PED. So here, we, we, if, we, uh, if we shine the parallel electron beam on this uh, thin specimen, um, the diffraction pattern is created this way. It's uh, the so-called the uh, Edwards uh, sphere here, uh, cutting through this uh, 3D reciprocal lattice uh, 3D reciprocal lattice rod called rare rod. And the radius uh, of this Edwards sphere is related to the wavelength uh, of the electron or accelerating uh, voltage of the TM machine. And this 3D um, uh, reciprocal lattice is related to the uh, sam uh, sample atomic arrangement or the uh, crystal structure of this uh, sample. Each rare rod uh, in this 3D lattice has an elongated uh, football shape. This rail, the railroad's length in the Z direction is um, inversely proportional to the um, uh, TN specimen thickness. That means uh, the thinner the sample, the longer uh, the railroad. Or the, if this uh, sample is thicker, um, this railroad becomes uh, shorter. And this is very important um, as we are going to use this conclusion later. Uh, to discuss the advantage of uh, using PED technique. And when the uh, Edwards sphere cutting through this uh, 3D uh, railroad, uh, we can project this cutting area here uh, on a 2D dimension that uh, form a 2D circle of the um, uh, TEM diffraction pattern shown on the uh, bottom left. And the um, Intensity of this uh, individual diffraction spot is related to where the uh, Edwards sphere uh, cut into the railroad. Uh, for example, the center um, of the diffraction pattern is the uh, when the uh, Ed uh, Ed Edwards sphere cutting through the middle or close uh, to the middle of the railroad, uh, which is bigger. So the uh, center part of this uh, diffraction pattern including the uh, zero, zero, 0 spot and the uh, low, lower order of the dif uh, diffraction spot is stronger. And as this uh, Edwards uh, sphere cutting through the railroad further away over here, it's just cutting through the edge or the tip of the railroad. And that is smaller. And for this reason, uh, we get a weaker diffraction spot um, on the outer uh, area over here. So eventually, uh, this Edward uh, sphere uh, will reach further. Um, when it reaches a further position, it means the, uh, the railroad completely over here. And the diffraction um, over this area disappeared. And this is how we get the um, uh, 3D diffraction pattern uh, from the um, 2D diffraction pattern from a crystalline, um, um, crystalline TM specimen. And that is what. Um, and that is, is how we get this. And, and the question is, when the, what, what is the diffraction pattern uh, can tell us? So first of all, uh, different crystal grain orientation generates the different diffraction pattern. And we can use this diffraction pattern to determine the uh, crystal uh, grain orientation as each location. For example, here uh, in red area, it generates diffraction, uh, uh, different diffraction pattern than the diffraction uh, diffraction pattern uh, from this uh, green area. And if we use this beam to scan across an area, uh, we can get one diffraction pattern at each, uh, at each pixel, and we can determine the crystal grain orientation at each pixel. Then we can maybe it's all assign the uh, different color uh, to each orientation, and this is how we get the uh, crystal orientation map. And besides this, we note uh, from our high school physics class that um, diffraction spot spacing is inversely, uh, inversely uh, proportional of the crystal lattice. So we can use this information for categorize the atomic lattice distance and generate a strain mapping at the nano, uh, nanometer scale. It sounds quite easy, right? But not so fast. Um, there are a couple problems uh, before we can make full use of this uh, diffraction. So problem number one, uh, a phenomena uh, called dynamical diffraction. 
and that makes things uh, complicated. And let's see uh, what it is. And why why is uh, why is bad for us? So when these uh, uh, electron beam hits the sample, and it's possible that uh, you can get scattered uh, more than once. And in this case, beam one uh, hits the sample, and then get scattered and become the beam two. And beam two can be get scattered again. And this beam two can be considered as an instant beam uh, for the next uh, scatter beam, beam three. And in this uh, uh, diffraction pattern, or we call in the uh, uh, reciprocal space, uh, it's just like adding uh, these two diffraction spot vector together. And here we create as a new one. In this case, we get a new diffraction spot that uh, shouldn't be there. And this cause a uh, cause problem because uh, as later on uh, we will discuss about how we uh, determine the uh, crystal orientation at each pixel. That is that when we use the uh, theoretical model to measure the diffraction pattern we got uh, in, uh, from experiment. And as we get uh, one more diffraction spot and that shouldn't be there, uh, this uh, confuse the uh, the software. So determining the uh, crystal orientation will not. Uh, be very uh, re reliable in this way. And uh, and also, besides this, we have uh, an, another problem, problem number two. Uh, that is when we do the uh, strand analysis, the TM specimen uh, usually needs to be relatively thick. And why is that? Um, because if the TM specimen is, uh, is, is very thin, Two thing, and there will not be enough surrounding material to hold and keep the uh, strand material in strand shape. The strand material will uh, relax back to their normal or relaxed uh, position. Then our strand data won't be accurate. Uh, that is why uh, we need a relatively thick TM specimen uh, to keep this strand uh, sample in strand position. And this cause problem. Uh, remember, uh, as we uh, discussed a few uh, slides back, um, the length of this um, uh, of this uh, rail log uh, is um, inversely uh, proportional to the thickness of the TM specimen. And as the TM specimen becomes thicker, the rail log becomes shorter. So in this way, the higher order of the rail log will miss by this Edwards sphere over here. And this uh, leads to uh, fewer diffraction spots and missing this higher order of the diffraction uh, diffraction spot. And the higher order of the diffraction spot here is very uh, critical to get a precise measurement uh, of the latest distance. So missing this uh, higher order diffraction makes the strain study um, uh, less uh, accurate. So we uh, mentioned these uh, two problems. So the question is that what is the solution? Uh, for, for these problems. So the solution is uh, using pre precession, uh, precession beam. The precession means the electron beam is tiered and then precess along this uh, uh, conical surface. This has the same uh, axis with the TM opti uh, optical axis. And this is just like forming a, a holocomb shape that is uh, uh, um, uh, precess like this way. And as the beam tilts, um, as we can see, this uh, uh, Edwards field um, uh, tilt also. And then it cuts um, the 3D reciprocal lattice real lot as a different position. For example, here, if we tilt the beam uh, to the left, showing orange, this Edwards sphere will cut the, uh, the cutting position is, uh, will become the, uh, to the left. And same thing happens if we uh, process and then tilt the beam uh, to the right and it cuts in uh, the position uh, on the uh, right-hand side, uh, show here in blue. So as, uh, as we, uh, we tilt and process the beam, this uh, atmosphere cutting this 3D reciprocal lattice and form this uh, 3D, uh, 2D circle of diffraction pattern as a different position, as a different time. So for example, uh, in this case, the cutting uh, uh, intercept circle move from this yellow area gradually uh, toward this blue area. And so this uh, lower order of the diffraction spot, like uh, spot two and three, 
that usually carry the most in, uh, diffraction intensity, and they will get cut by this uh, Edwards sphere at a different time. So they they are not uh, get excited at the same time. So they uh, they don't add up together to form an additional uh, uh, diffraction spot. So in this way, the dynamic uh, dynamical diffraction effect become uh, less severe. And here is the comparison of the dynamic uh, dynamical diffraction pattern without the precess beam on the left, comparing to the di uh, diffraction pattern generated by the uh, precession beams uh, on the right. And here we can see the, uh, the forbidden uh, spot is largely a void uh, in the uh, in the diffraction pattern uh, from the uh, precess beam, and and that is uh, closer uh, to theoretical or so-called uh, kinematical diffraction pattern. And the pattern the, the pattern is easy can be easily recognized by the software. For the problem number two, uh, there is a missing of the higher order of the diffraction spot. PED can help too, uh, because this uh, when, when the beam precess, the uh, adverse uh, sphere can uh, will be cutting uh, to the outer area of this uh, 3D reciprocal lattice, uh, like this uh, yellow one. And when it move along, it will cut all this outer area showing over here, uh, this um, uh, of this 3D lattice rod. And if we accumulate and sum up uh, all of this diffraction pattern together, and you form a much, la uh, much larger cycle uh, shown here in the light screen over here. And that is much uh, larger uh, than the original uh, original one, like this, uh, uh, the dark blue uh, on the center. And this way we can get a, a bigger field of view of the diffraction pattern, and that including uh, the higher order of the diffraction spot. So here is a uh, uh, here shows the uh, precession effect uh, side by side. The diffraction pattern uh, on the left um, uh, is a diffraction pattern without the precession, and uh, the uh, the pattern on the right is the diffraction pattern with the uh, precession. The middle one uh, is a theoretical pattern. So first we can see the uh, diffraction pattern with the precession is closer, uh, uh, look closer to a theoretical pattern. So we can get more reliable uh, orientation uh, uh, orientation identification. Also, uh, as we uh, uh, we can we can get a larger field of view um, of the diffraction that's including a higher order uh, of the diffraction pattern. This way, we get a more accurate uh, strength uh, calculation. So by now uh, we understand the uh, working principle of the PED but uh, how it looked like in reality. And here it shows the, uh, the, uh, our TM, the TM-based uh, 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 PED machine and uh, its, uh, its workflow. In our lab, uh, we use the Nanomega uh, system uh, installed uh, in our um, FEI Tech9 TM machine. And for data collection, uh, first we put a, a thin uh, TM specimen uh, in a TM another beam under the nano, uh, nano beam diffraction MBD condition. Then we process the beam and scan through the uh, uh, area of interest. And the camera over here uh, capture the diffraction pattern as the, uh, as the beam scan uh, through the sample. So at the each pixel uh, on this uh, 2D map, we get another um, uh, 2D diffraction pattern. So this 2D times 2D uh, is 4D. So that means our, our, our PED data set uh, is a uh, 4D data set. And so uh, the PED data set is usually uh, pretty big. And for a uh, grand orientation mapping application, the diffraction pattern at each pixel is matched with this uh, theoretical um, model and determine the, uh, 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 the software determine the, um, the match and then determine the orientation. And then we can generate this uh, uh, grand uh, orientation mapping. So for strand, uh, strand mapping application, the diffraction spot distance at each pixel uh, is, is, uh, is compared um, to the strand-free area. And the difference of this spacing is calculated to generate uh, the strand data uh, to, to, to create a strand mapping. 
So having know all of this, uh, people might ask uh, when we need the PED or when we don't want to use PED or what is the strength or the limitation of this, te of this technique. Uh, to answer this question, uh, we need to understand that uh, first, um, PD is a TEM-based technique. So compared to the SEM-based EBSD and the X-ray-based uh, XRD, it uh, provides a better resolution. Uh, but at the same time, it also carry the same problem that TEM technique has. Like for example, it has a, a relatively uh, lim uh, limited sample sampling area. Uh, typically smaller than uh, 10 micron. And, and on the top of it, uh, sample preparation uh, is not easy. Uh, for example, uh, we usually need to have a super thin sample uh, in grain orientation mapping application uh, to avoid the uh, grain overlapping issue. And for strand application, we need a relative uh, thicker sample. And besides this, we also uh, need to have a prior knowledge of the uh, crystal structure for grain orientation mapping application. And the reason is that the software, uh, the software does not identify the uh, uh, diffraction pattern. So instead, the software uses the theoretical, uh, theoretical model that uh, the user uh, asks that give to it. And it uses this model uh, to measure the diffraction pattern that we collected. And uh, the, it, uh, the software picked the winner and uh, that match the, uh, the diffraction pattern the best. And so we, we, in this way, we need to tell the software um, what, what is the candidates of the structure uh, to use. So if we, if we don't know the uh, crystal structure beforehand, uh, we will need to use uh, other technique to, uh, to, to, to determine it first. Uh, for example, we can use uh, uh, XRD. Okay, so uh, final part uh, is the uh, is the case study, and uh, let's see how we can use the PD technique to solve the uh, uh, different uh, different problems. So the uh, first example is a seven nanometer SOC, uh, so called uh, uh, system on a chip uh, application processor that's uh, taken from a smart uh, smartphone. And this chip, uh, we uh, it use the uh, most advanced uh, technique uh, so far, uh, seven nanometer UV thin fat. And as we all know that uh, in the past uh, uh, 50 years, um, in the semiconductor industry, it has been uh, follow, uh, following the so-called Morse law. And it says the transistor number density uh, double uh, every two years. Um, so that means this transistor density increase and the size of the transistor uh, keep in, uh, decreasing. And so this uh, cause scaling. Uh, in this way, we have a, a higher consume, uh, a a computational power with the uh, less, uh, uh, less power consumption. But uh, we also know that with a metal interconnect line, um, uh, as the, uh, the size uh, decrease, the metal lines resistance uh, increase. And that cause a more heat and bigger uh, power con uh, power consumption. So especially now, uh, we the, the size of the metal lines uh, has shrunk to tens of nanometer, and uh, the problem become a uh, uh, much much uh, uh, severe. So there are several ways uh, people try to overcome uh, this problem. Uh, like we can use uh, other metal, for example, uh, use. Uh, uh, copper to replace alumina. Now we use uh, cobalt and uh, ruthenia, so on. So the but the next route uh, we can think of is that instead of uh, changing the uh, material, uh, we can also think about a way to change the physical property of the existing uh, material. Uh, for example, is a uh, uh, grain size. Uh, we we discussed uh, at the first beginning of this talk that um, we know the electron scatter uh, at the grain boundary. And the smaller the grain size, uh, the more the grain boundary. Uh, so the small, uh, smaller grain size uh, can carry uh, more grain boundary and that uh, leads to more resistivity, eventually more power consumption. And so here is how our uh, PED technique can, can chip in to help uh, to characterize the grain size as a nanometer scale. And here shows that grain size distribution of the uh, different metal line, uh, metal one, two, three uh, by PED. And we can see the data, um, yeah, we can use this data 
uh, to twist the uh, the process to hopefully um, change the resistivity uh, of the uh, of the metal line. Besides this uh, grain size and grain orientation mapping, um, PED can also provide a statistical uh, uh, quantification of the uh, preferential growth direction of the metal, and that is called uh, texture information. Uh, using the uh, pore figure. Uh, we can check uh, if this grain has preferential growth direction or not. And in this case, we, we can see this uh, um, copper 111 direction has a preferential uh, vertical growth uh, direction shown here. Um, <coughs> and we can, we can see that uh, this direction is <coughs> seven times higher than the average uh, direction. And that should be considered uh, statistical significance. The second case is a 3D NAM uh, fresh memory uh, device that we also uh, taken from uh, a smartphone. Uh, for 3D NAM devices, uh, the device is not only uh, scaling down, uh, but also uh, uh, stacking up. Uh, this means the feature is smaller, but also uh, more, more and more there is, uh, uh, is adding on. Uh, from the uh, initially uh, 16 layer, uh, 32, um, 64, and right now it's more than 100 layers. So there are many, many challenges um, lead to this uh, process. One of the challenges is still the resisti resistivity uh, because we have more layers of the structure and the heat uh, generated inside, it's more difficult uh, to, to dissipate out. Also, these uh, traditional CVD tungsten deposition process can, uh, can introduce stress and that can bound the wafer and this causes the, uh, the, uh, the failure rates increase. So now let's see how the PED uh, help us understand this material uh, at a nanometer level. So we can use a PED to get uh, also the, um, the grain orientation um, um, and also can generate the grain size distribution. But also uh, we can use the PED to, um, to do more detailed analysis. For example, here we can analyze the grain boundary the miss uh, the misorientation. See how many degrees of misorientation from one grain to the other. Um, so here we we uh, if we see uh, more closely, uh, we can see some uh, interesting things uh, here in this sample. So remember in the previous uh, example, the metal line in the SOC chip uh, within the each individual grain there's uh, almost the uh, same color, just like this one. And if we would draw a line uh, to check. Uh, this uh, misorientation from one end to the other, uh, usually within a, a, a couple degree, uh, just uh, just like here. But in this case, in this uh, tungsten film, uh, we can also see that many grains have a slightly color change within uh, within the same grain. For example, this purple ones uh, on the bottom left, and it change from the uh, red uh, on one end to the purple uh, on the other end. And so if we draw a line across, uh, we can see this uh, misorientation is um, relative uh, uh, quite large, uh, bigger than 10 degree. And there are quite a few of the grain uh, looking like this. And we know this uh, misorientation within the uh, grain uh, means stress and higher, the energy, higher energy state. And this is a sign of the stress and uh, uh, the stress inside this uh, uh, material. So this way we can use a PED to get a more uh, detailed um, analysis to understand the, uh, the quality of this film. The last example is a uh, 45 uh, nanometer uh, technolo technology node IC chips. Uh, we know that uh, the transistor is just like a switch. Uh, the gate uh, controls the on and off of this switch. And how fast uh, this switch can operate depending on uh, uh, several factors. And one of them is that after uh, this switch uh, uh, just turn on, how fast the charge carrier can pass through this uh, uh, through the uh, source uh, to the drain area to deliver uh, the signal. And a couple of things uh, we can do to speed up uh, this process. And one, uh, one first of all, um, to shorten. Um, um, the, the thing uh, easily can, can think of is to uh, shorten the length between this uh, 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 source and drain. And this related to the, uh, the MOS law that is scaling down of the device and making the transistor uh, become smaller. 
The other way um, to make the speed of the charge carrier faster is that um, people have found that um, by squids, uh, these uh, silicon lattice over here, or in the other world, if we introduce the strand uh, inside a silicon, the whole, uh, the charge carrier of the PMOS device can uh, move faster. And uh, how to characterize these uh, small strands within this uh, nanometer um, scale uh, is very changing. So here is uh, where the PD can also help. So here shows uh, we use the um, uh, PD to map the uh, the strands level, the strand level in this uh, 45 um, nanometer technology node transistor uh, with uh, high uh, sensitivity. Uh, in this color-coded map, the areas uh, in red uh, shows in intention, uh, and uh, the area in blue uh, is in compression. We can also uh, draw a line to get more uh, uh, quantitatively data. Uh, for example, the map here uh, shows the silicon between the uh, source and drain is in a negative um, negative value uh, in this uh, x direction. So it's in a compression, but in a y uh, direction uh, is in a positive territory, uh, meaning uh, in this direction is in tension. So overall, it's just like a elongated uh, rectangular uh, shape. Uh, so uh, in this case, I exaggerate uh, this a lot uh, to plot this uh, to plot this shape. Uh, in reality, this trend is a uh, uh, very small. Uh, even the largest difference. Uh, is only one uh, percent, and and the smaller end, uh, like over here, uh, the compression is um, uh, smaller than ten minus three order. And here's we uh, <clears throat> how we can see the uh, the PED technique can be very sensitive and picking up this uh, this tiny difference. And the last part is the uh, the summary. Um, TN can do a lot of great things. It's a great uh, imaging tool. Provide uh, the uh, can provide sub angstrom uh, resolution. Uh, we can use uh, we use it to do the um, uh, chemical analysis at the nanometer scale, and it can also do the structure analysis. For example, uh, PED uh, to to get the grain orientation mapping, strain mapping at the um, nanometer uh, scale. And finally, I would like to thank everybody uh, who uh, who support this work, uh, Team Nano Lab, and also my uh, collaborators, um, our, our vendor, um, uh, Nano Mega uh, Nano Mega's team uh, for their support. And finally, this is uh, um, the reason um, I don't have time to go over all of this, but this is a uh, quickly. Uh, there's a reason that we. Uh, we want to uh, choose a uh, European material science division. And one thing I want to emphasize here is that um, uh, we have uh, complied with the latest uh, COVID-19 regulation uh, from state and local government and also uh, CDC. And now uh, all of our location throughout the world are still open, um, but we, uh, we might have a limitation on the uh, customer visit. Uh, 